All candidates participating were asked the same questions and were given the same amount of time to respond. This video was filmed by QAC TV and the questions were selected by editor Angela Price with reader input. I'm Hannah Combs with the Bay Times and Record Observer and we're here with Phil Duminell today who's the Republican candidate for District 3. Mm -hmm. So thank you for joining us sure. this morning. Thank you very much for having me. We'd like you to tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're interested in running for office again. Again, again. yeah. So, um, yeah, and as you said, I, I served as a Queen Anne's County Commissioner from 2011 to 2014. Um, uh, a very interesting time for our community um, with some budgetary challenges that uh, eventually were corrected and fixed. Um, I have a tremendous amount of experience, obviously, as a sitting commissioner, and in those times, those four years that I served, I served on four different commissions for four consecutive years, a Commission on Aging, uh, the Parks and Recs Advisory Board, the Fire and EMS Commission, and then also our Department of Emergency Services Advisory Commission. So in addition to the day-to-day -day responsibilities um, as a commissioner, uh, I made a commitment to those organizations and those functions in, inside county government. The main, one of the main reasons that I've decided to, to run again is um, a concern that over the last four years the representation in the third district lacked some important qualities uh, transparency um, good business practices ethics uh, honesty hard work experience um, so you know one of the reasons is to bring those those qualities back to the third district jumping off of that what are the biggest issues that you see facing the county right now uh, traffic, obviously, that has been a um, kind of a, a, a popular topic of discussion. Um, there are different ideas uh, that are out there on how we can fix them. Um, it is certainly a, a challenge for sure. Um, I'd have to say that's probably one of the biggest uh, that will have to be addressed. Um, I think the current set of commissioners have, have done a good job in, in, in taking the initiative to work collaboratively with the state highway administration and our sheriff's office to come up with something uh, that is going to work for everybody. And I think that's the key, something that has to work for everybody. Mm -hmm. We'll take a minute and go over some more questions. And uh, the comprehensive plan is going to be updated in the next term. Mm -hmm. What's your vision for how that can um, so when I ran um, for commissioner back in 2010, they were updating the current plan that we have now. Um, so I had an opportunity to sit in um, on some of the Blue Ribbon Panel hearings and the discussions that took place and, and the concerns that were being addressed in the updating of the plan. First of all, the vision of the comprehensive plan is the same vision that it's been for 35 plus years to be a quintessential rural community that's economically viable. So it, it's really not a vision change. Um, I don't see the vision changing. I think that's our community, a, a rural community that needs to be economically viable. And so the updating of the plan, because we've had some changes, uh, obviously community changes in, in, in a 10 year period. So the needs are different. So this is why you update, but the vision of the plan stays the same. Mm -hmm. As that community changes, we see the senior citizen population growing in Queen Anne's County. What are some suggestions or provisions you could make for providing services to those senior citizens? So the, the, so the easiest answer to um, a lot of questions that the citizens are asking these days is the comprehensive plan. Um, I had mentioned that I served on the Commission on Aging as a commissioner for four years. Um, so I'm familiar with you know, some of their concerns and their needs. Um, the obvious one is to have, you know, a lot of them live on fixed incomes. Uh, it's a degree of variance in their fixed incomes, but they all have um, a budget that they stick to. Um, and that's part of, you know, you know, retirement. And so they don't, they want good health care. They want um, accessible health care. They want um, uh, uh, to know that their taxes aren't going to be increased, uh, which ultimately affects their ability, you know, to pay their bills and make ends meet. Um, and, and so the comprehensive plan needs to address that. And, and some staggering in, uh, numbers is that, you know, our, our aging population from 65 and older from 2012 to year 2025 is anticipated to grow by 125%. So there's certainly going to be some needs in our comprehensive plan that are going to have to be addressed to accommodate that, that growing population in our 
seniors. Mm -hmm. Another issue the county commissioners have been faced with is the school system's request for funding above maintenance of effort. Right. So <laughs> I had mentioned earlier um, that um, our first year in office, we were tasked with um, trying to balance a, a, a tremendous budget shortfall, depending on who you spoke to, 18 to $20 million. And so, you know, we took a look at all functions of county government, education, public safety, and then, of course, government itself. Um, I think that the formula that the state uses, Hannah, is, um, is a fair formula to determine the dollar amount in which we must fund education above the dollar amount that we funded it the year before. And most people have to realize that whatever that means, if ever dollar number is, it's the same number plus whatever the new dollar amount is. So it will always continue to grow. We have a great education system. Our graduating seniors are in the upper 90 percentile. Uh, as a parent who has kids in the school system, I'm very pleased with the education that they're getting. Our school doors open on time. And, and as I said, we're getting a tremendous bang for our buck. Quality of education is in the top five in the state. And the cost per student to educate in the state compared to other school districts, we're one of the fourth lowest. So we're getting, taxpayers are getting a good bang for their buck when it comes to education. This question might go back to the comprehensive plan. They all do. <laughs> but how would you balance future development and protecting the environment? Um, again, again, that can certainly be addressed within the guidelines and the parameters of the comprehensive plan. I mentioned earlier about changes in our community and what's taken place over the last 10 years and projects that were in the loop that are now done or reaching completion and where you start looking at the next growth areas in our community and maintain that vision of a real community. So um, for larger projects that are anticipate will be in the pipeline, I'd love to see the environmental folks come to the table and work with the developers and the engineers and on a collaborative effort on these projects. But you've got to have a, a certain amount of residential growth and commercial growth in order for a community to stay economically viable, which is part of the vision of our comprehensive plan. Excuse me, that brings us to our next question which is fostering business growth and economic development within the county. Um, my plans your, your to, to foster that? that? Um, well, first of all, I think part of the, part of, well, there's, there's, there's a lot of different approaches to ensuring that. One of them, I think, is the, is the permitting process. Um, it's, parts of it are, in my opinion, are, are convoluted. In other words, the, the process is too lengthy. It doesn't necessarily need to be. And I know that the scope of a project size requires certain processes to take place. But even in those processes, we could streamline them. Um, I, I, but you've got to have, I mean, you've got to have that element of, of development and mm -hmm. growth because then it brings the jobs and it, and, it, and it brings the economic development to a community. Um, the comprehensive plan, again, the vision of it, ensures that you have a good balance of both. Mm -hmm. Another concern that we've heard is residents in the northern part of the county don't always feel like they get the same level of services that the rest of the county does. How would you address their concerns? Um, so uh, specific concerns, um, you know, obviously being, you know, speaking to folks that live in the northern part of the county, you know, so what are specifically what are those concerns? But um, some folks live in the northern part of the county because of the more rural nature of it mm -hmm. than the southern part of the county. So they choose to live up there um, because they don't want the population densities that we have in the southern part of the county. Um, there is they don't have the infrastructure, the sewer and water component that they have down here. So but I, I'd like to think that the services that they receive that are equal in all parts of the county are, is the quality of education mm -hmm. that their kids are getting. Um, the public safety factor um, that they're getting the, the same attention when it comes to public safety as they do in the southern part of the county. Um, and then the quality of, uh, of the roads that, that everybody has to drive on, mm -hmm. um, you know, the public road component of it. I'd like to think that those things are no different. Are there any other issues or topics that we haven't hit on that you'd like to discuss? Um, I think the questions that, that you ask cover a large um, facet of what we face short term and long term. Um, there are um, perhaps the updating of the comprehensive plan um, is something that we need to be diligent 
about doing for sure because again it's our short-term and long-term plans and how the county and the direction it's going to go for the next 10 years um, somebody who has seen that process uh, with the current plan we're in to where we are and then the, of course the opportunity to be part of um, the process moving forward into the future um, I think we, there needs to be due diligence uh, in, in selecting perhaps a blue rib panel again uh, equal representation for for all concerned in the community on how that plan will be updated um, is important to me. Uh, I'd like us to, to do that same process um, and then have some, some folks that have a stake in the short and long-term uh, future of this county be at that table mm -hmm. when the plan is updated. All right. Well, thank you, Phil. Well, we appreciate you joining us and participating. I, yeah. Anna, thank you very much for the opportunity. I appreciate it. And if I can say one thing real quick, folks, please remember on November 6th, get out there and vote.